Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Marf Files. So this is going to be a little continuation from the last episode. Um, I'm still kind of pairing the Marf with the sequential voltage source, model 245, uh, provided by uh, Chip Flynn from the MEMS project. And um, last time we focused on how the Marf can be a sequential switch, and depending on which way you clock it and everything, all the different ways you can um, address all these uh, four sequence outputs and um disperse them so um and it, after i kind of put the video out is i kind of realized that you know i didn't really make as big of a point kind of it was all about the sequential switch nature but it wasn't really pointing out how much of a cv processor the marf was um in that instance and so i'm gonna do a similar patch but i'm also gonna kind of expand or kind of be more deliberate about pointing out the uh, the CV processing capabilities. And then we're also going to talk about the reference output too. Uh, okay, so let's patch this thing up. Um, we're going to have the 245's um, clock um, sequence our function generator. And we're going to go into sawtooth oscillator up here and bring that in a little bit so um i guess just real quickly i kind of i'll program um what we need to kind of set up for this so we're um having we're reading external um and first kind of what we did before was we quantized our voltage um so that You can hear the voltage from the 245 being regulated to where it just spits out kind of um, semitones instead of just being. Um, yeah, totally freeform. Um, so yeah, we're quantizing, and then the also also thing that we did too was we limited the range, so we were attenuating its output too. So then um, if we press the plus zero, we only get one octave out of the full range of this sweep of this knob. Um, so I'll set this up to follow along with the five steps. So I'm going to set up kind of like a five step sequence here as well. Um, so then I gotta add um, all the externals there and let's just do plus four for all these. Okay. So we're on one and one. So if we start here, oh, it looks like I missed my quantize for everything. Okay, so we're quantizing and we're limiting, we're kind of attenuating and offsetting the voltage of this to fit in a specific, um, um, you know, frequency range that we want to use. And now what I kind of didn't go into um, before was using slopes. So if we turn on slopes for this, uh, we're going to get kind of slew limiting. So we're going to, you know, where there's going to be a ramp up and ramp down between the changes in in voltage that is coming through on the uh, 245. So, as you can hear, it's pretty sick <laughs> sounding, and we're, it's not actually kind of reaching the volts, the uh, the actual kind of end point of the, the pitch changes or the voltage changes. Um, because our clock on the 245 is faster than what we have our internal clock set to in the MARF. So if we were to limit our uh, time range now, so now we're in the 0.2 to 3 second range, and our time multiplier is down all the way, or it's at the fastest setting. Now you can kind of hear that 
ramp up and down. And we can add time multiplier to get back to that point where it kind of sounds seasick and it doesn't actually make it to the pitches. But if we were to slow down our clock here, Now we got a nice kind of ramp between these changes. But you can adjust your clock, your internal timing on the MARF with the external timing. So for faster, probably want to have the time multiplier down and then maybe even shorten the range again. So now you hear very kind of imperceptible how much the slew is doing. It's not that prevalent. If I take it out, there's a little bit there. So you use your time multiplier again. But what's cool that we haven't got into, because we're using the time multiplier and the time ranges, we also have the uh, interval time sliders. So we could be adjusting our sliders to have to push certain steps or kind of dial in the amount of slew we want per step, which is kind of neat. What I can also do, I guess, you know, we're all within this kind of one octave that all these notes are playing from. And we still actually... I, we still have the sequential switch nature going, so I could, you know, change some of the notes if I want. Um, but we can kind of, per step, you know, change. Um, now with these, you know, now we're spanning over several octaves, so the, um, the slew has, a, you know, a higher range that it needs to kind of get to, um, so you can hear kind of these more extreme sweeps, which is pretty cool. So kind of cool that you have a, you know, per step slew limiter that's highly adjustable um, within this kind of setup. Um, one thing I can show off too, it's like we don't have to use all five stages, um, just depending on, I guess, on what your, on what your focus is for your patch. Um, we could, um, we could just limit this to um, to two stages. So you have to have, um, for, for the slew to, to, or the slopes to be able to work. Um, we couldn't just have the sitting on where, like, let me show you, I guess if we, um, um, so we're on stage one here. Um, and if we were, you know, to have the 245 go but not clock the marf we're not going to get any kind of slewing happening because it's the change in the marf's um, uh, stages that provides the slew um, yet we still have the quantize and um, you know range limiting that we can do and the uh, sequential switch kind of action here too but in order to get the slopes, we got to have two stages. So if we kind of go back. There we go. 
uh, for some reason its own clock started. I guess probably put a pulse in there first. So now, um, we kind of have the same, we have some sloping functions. It's just more limited. Why I point this out is, you know, there's two sides to, uh, to the MARF. And so you got another, you know, function generator that you could be playing with and doing totally something different with. So if you wanted to limit the amount of steps that you're taking up to do just like some slew limiting for another sequencer or whatever you're looking to do, then you have, you know, only two steps that are in play where you have the other uh, 14 steps that you can uh, play around with on the other function generator. Um, but still, only having two, you can kind of... Have some fun with that. So yeah, if you want even kind of slopes, use your time multiplier, I mean, you can still kind of get them set to the same amount. You could be using random voltages. We could clock that real quick and see what that's like. So now every time the voltage goes high, we're gonna get um, more slewing to happen. We can go the opposite where we can like set our, the max amount and then we can attenuate that slew amount. And I am still doing um, the sequential switch, but just with um, two steps, or you know, which is kind of cool too. You can still get a lot of variation as well. Okay, so that's slew limiting with uh, by using the MARF, some more kind of CV processing. Um, so yeah, the other thing I was going to um, point out, um, which is kind of neat, and I don't know if we've really kind of touched on the reference uh, output that much um, in this series, uh, but I probably mentioned before the reference is um, kind of like the uh, pulser, like on the 245 or the 208 in the music easel, where it's a down ramp that is the length of time that you have set up. So, um, so yeah, that'll happen within this. Um, it'll give out kind of a little down ramp envelope every time um, it changes its stage. Uh, so that's a cool little nifty quick envelope, um, that you can use for kind of percussive stuff, which is nice. Um, uh, you don't have to, you know, use a 281. Um, what's cool about it too, is if you have a patch and especially useful with the, uh, MARF because you have, um, per stage timing variables that you can really specifically kind of set up. I mean, sure. You can CV, the um the 245 or the 246 and have um it's time fluctuating a lot um but you kind of get a little bit more precision with your many layers of of timing here um that your envelope is going to stay to the um to the length of that stage so it's going to vary with that clock um which if you're going to like just do a pulse out from the from the MARF or from the 245 into a 281, you know, that envelope's going to stay the same length unless you're constantly adjusting it in time or you have like some random voltage or something else that's 
changing that as well. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is patch that. Um, so I guess kind of what I'm going towards, um, you know, we've used all these kind of layers of timing with, um, with the slopes and it, it works kind of the same way. Like you've seen that basically the, the length of the multiplier, the, the time interval, uh, the time range, it's all going to play with, um, with the length of the slopes and the, um, the reference out. So, um, let's go back to, um, our five stages again. Um, and I'll just do a quick, um, if you want things to sync, as you can see, um, I mean, what I guess what I could do is, uh, I could stop this and I could, uh, advance this to stage five and then, um, go back there. But if you ever get kind of, um, out of sync, you can put your um, uh, pulse out from the 245 into the strobe uh, input and have it set to one, and then it will kind of reset. Um, all right, I'm going to take out the slopes. So I've slowed down the 245's clock, um, and it's going to be, it's longer than what the uh, the MARF is kind of set to right now. That's why you kind of have space between these notes. Um, so cool to get kind of some articulation there. But instead of if we were just like using um, the 245's reference out, um, So our time range can make things really pl plucky. And um, you know, our time range can kind of open things up. Um, but then we kind of have a per stage um, variable. Because we're being clocked by this, it's kind of hard synced here. Um, we still have that time between what this clock is and what our internal clock is to kind of give accents to these um, different state or steps or stages. really cool is if we um, go to the shortest or the fastest time range uh, we kind of lose everything because um, it's just too short <laughs> to even produce any kind of uh, voltage very long to uh, to open up the uh, to hit that vectoral and open up that gate so then we can use our time sliders to bring that back in it's all going to be very kind of short, plucky stuff because it's a very short time range. But, um, you know, it's kind of within the, the shorter range of like your, um, your 281 set really low. But you kind of have mutes like for your different stages and kind of a mixer in a way. Kind of reminds me of um, setting up the music easel where you have the sequential voltage sequential voltage switches which you can trigger the um, the easel's envelope that you can patch into your low pass gate and with switches you can kind of on the fly change the um, you know which steps are being addressed and are, are gonna um, sorry are gonna be um, giving a trigger to the envelope but instead of switches you kind of have a a mixer setting. So yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Okay. 
you know, we can go back, same thing like we were, I was talking about before, we can just go back to a two-stage kind of thing, too, and just have... So one other cool thing that I came across, um, I guess once again, I'll go back to our full five stages again, um, is also in this kind of setup, um, you know, we're using the external sources through and we're processing its voltage. We also have the external um, input access for the, um, for the time as well. So if we turn this back on, um, we'll go to this one. We could switch this over. And now we have this set to A. So now our row A voltages are giving us a sort of a rhythm to base, based on whether they're low or high. Like you can see stage one is very low, um, where stage two is very high. And that's why stage two, you get that the loudest kind of envelope out of there. But then you can kind of adjust, and now we're accessing row D to get its kind of rhythm of what it's set up at. Like three is very high on this one, on row C. B is pretty low, four is kind of high. But then you can just start, you know, mixing and matching again and use different channels to access different uh, rhythms out of this. So yeah, another, I don't know, I thought it was kind of interesting too, another set of voltages to access to, um, you know, still keep things in time, but you have, um, you're able to play with the this envelope a bit, which is simple, but um, kind of handy. You know, you can get away with using this if you don't have a 281 in your system. I don't know why you wouldn't, but, you know, don't sleep on the reference out, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, thanks uh, for... Uh, coming back and checking out this kind of follow-up to the last one. I'm going to send this puppy back to its owner. Thanks very much, uh, Chip and Mark from MEMS, for, for letting me borrow that. It's been a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, now i got to figure out uh, something else to do with this thing. So uh, until next time, happy patching. <laughs>